Whiplash here, welcome back to another tutorial from P Studios. This is from the XNA Advanced Technique series. And it's been a little while since we did tutorials, as me being sick and been busy with the Dream Build Play project, but we are going to do a few tutorials today and tomorrow for you. Hopefully you get ten out by the end of the week and hopefully you guys will be good to go for a little while so this tutorial we're going to pick off where we left off which was the last tutorial we did which was a menu system so we're going to do the advanced screen system and this is just a enhanced version of the screen system we did a few tutorials ago which is tutorial number four three and four intro screen and screen manager now the advanced screen system you can download the sample and that just includes the screen system itself it does not include the implementation so it's just the class files and I'm not going to go in depth on the implementation it's basically the exact same thing as the screen manager files which is on the main website so I'm just going to go over the differences and I've already implemented it here for you and one of the differences is the fade is built into the game screen it's not in a fade screen or a intro screen it's just built into the game screen so let me go over there and there's currently one method you can change this up override it whatever you want to do and just customize it but basically you just pass the sprite batch that has to be in between the begin and end calls so it's just gonna fade screen by doing dot draw it's not gonna have begin or end inside the fade screen itself then you pass the texture you want to fade the color you want it to fade by and the opacity and then we're going to multiply the opacity by 255 to get the alpha value and then we'll just passes the color inside the new color and then we just draw the texture and it's going to be the full game window now you can customize this or add another uh, fade screen or you can just have a passive rectangle and then you will just draw the rectangle instead of the full game window and then of course we clamp the opacity so it's not lower than zero or greater than one it's between 0 and 1. And then we grab the viewport and then we draw the fade. So that's one thing. It's different. Now if we look at the screen manager we have a few things different in the properties. In the earlier version to get the content we have to call the screen manager dot game dot content and we just I just added a content property in there that just returns game.content and same thing with the viewport in the earlier version we had to call screen manager dot game dot graphics device dot viewport and so on so that's built into the properties now the update and draw something is a little bit different here if there is no screen in the screen manager we're just going to exit the game Because there's n if there's no screen in the screen manager, there's no way we can get a screen inside the screen manager unless you add that to the game1.cs coding. If so, you can just delete this and go on from there. So anything on here can be removed to fit your needs. Now one of these that is included is we added the screen.update. We added that if statement in here that if it's frozen or inactive it will not update now also if we go into the game screen and we look at the update method we have more if statements to check so if it's frozen or inactive we're just going to return we're not going to do any updating now this is needed in case you set frozen before base start update so if you're in a game screen, let's say play screen for example, 
and you pause it, it's gonna freeze, then you get to base update. This needs to be there so things do not go wacky. Now you can fix that, but that's called base that update before you do actual logic. But just in case you don't, this is here for preventive measures. So now if it's transitioning on, we check the transition. If it's still transitioning, we just set it to transition off. Otherwise, it's active. And we do the same thing for transition off. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the game screen. Now the menu screen, this is still the earlier menu screen. The enhanced menu screen is a few tutorials later on. That just uses events. So this is the menu screen we went over before. So let's look at the logo screen without the built-in fading of the intro screen. The fading is built in the game screen, but we removed the fading in the intro screen because we added it to the game screen. And also, a pretty complicated way to use a single pixel. I put off discussing that in the past, but since this is a very short tutorial, I'll do it sub tutorial on how to do a single pixel without using a texture. So as you've seen in the past we've just passed a single pixel texture inside the content that went along with this PHS logo and that's still available for download inside of the uh, download images that we've included in the intro screen you can download those there. Now that has been taken out of the later tutorials, starting from here, because I'll discuss an easy way to use a single pixel without using the .png file. So if we go back to the logo screen, the pixel is built into the intro screen. We have used that in the past. So we just set that as new texture. We want to grab the graphics device from the screen manager this can have a width and height of 1. You can get the code completion when you just do is equals new texture 2D. And then just hover over that and you can get the code completion. It's graphics device, comma, int width, comma, int height. So our pixel is going to be just one pixel, one width, one height. Then we set the data by adding the color 